Hello everyone, this is General Hangarnu. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today's video is about China. I was going to make a video, a short video, about uh, what you could do with the Flying Tigers fighter. That is the one uh, fighter that the Chinese have, that uh, the Americans, it was actually, it wasn't, the Americans didn't give it to them, they were actually volunteers, I believe. Uh, maybe the Americans gave the fighter, but it was volunteer pilots from the U.S. who, who came over and flew them. So I was, uh, was going to show you that, uh, where to hide that fighter so that the Japanese couldn't take it out. But then, you know, like I kind of realized that uh, I've never done a video on China before. I've done them on all the other countries except for France and China. So, uh, and, and I do see an awful lot of, of people who have questions about China. Because the rules regarding China are completely different than everybody else on the board. I mean, France is basically the same. It's just, you know... They, they, they don't have much of a role because they lose their capital right away. But China, you know, like China doesn't even have a capital and, and, and uh, everything about them is different. How, how, how the game is played is different from them. So I thought I'd just uh, take the time to go over all of the China rules because, uh, though, like I said, those, those get uh, confused quite a bit of the time. I see a lot of questions on the forums. And uh, last weekend at the Grasshopper Invitational, I see I seen a bit of confusion as well. So what you're looking at here is page ten of, of the Pacific Rule Book. Uh, it's got China rules, and then uh, if you flip to page thirty-eight as well, uh, one more page. It's just got one small blurb in there, just one small thing. It just talks about the Burger Road, which we're going to talk about anyway, and the political situation, which is consists of China's at war with Japan and uh, they can't declare war on Germany and Italy but Italy and Germany can declare war on them not that any of that matters I mean all that really matters is Japan but uh, they're not at a, at a state of war with with Italy and Germany unless uh, Italy or, or Germany enters their country but it is worth uh, mentioning the other the rest of the political situation though um, namely um, Britain and, and the United uh, and, and or, yeah Britain and, and Anzac. So if Britain or Anzac enters uh, any part of China, and it, it would probably be in Yunnan, so I'll just put them here. So if either one of these uh, either one of these countries enter China, uh, whether China owns that territory, or whether Japan owns the territory, it doesn't matter. If they enter that territory when China is uh, is uh, or sorry when Japan is not at war with the, the Western allies, then that is considered an unprovoked declaration of war by Japan. And that means that Japan would be at war with both of these nations. Even if it was just one of them that went in, it doesn't matter which one goes in. If, if one of those nations ent enters China, then they are both at war with Japan and America is not at war with Japan. So if that happens on the first turn, then, then, the, then Japan is gonna have free reign to attack uh, the UK and ANZAC without the Americans being able to do anything about it. The Americans will still be not at war. Uh, so that's not an ideal situation for them, at least not on the first turn anyway. It's not so bad if, if it happens on the second or third turn. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's the sum and total of the, the political situation. But, uh, you know, one of the things that people get confused about is they think that China is just these territories here, the dark green ones like you see here, right? And uh, it is that, but it's more than that too. It's also um, these territories here. You see, they've got the Chinese nationalist roundel on them as well, right up to Manchuria there. Here, let me just move that up so you can see it. Even Manchuria up there is a Chinese territory. And so um, uh, the, 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 uh, in 1940, they've already been taken control of by Japan. But they are originally controlled Chinese territories, and that's very important uh, when it comes to the rules because there are rules that uh, are regarding originally controlled Chinese territories, uh, or, or sorry, original originally controlled territories of any kind. Um, um, and I'll get to that in a second. I just want to show you uh, the, the territories that China does control at the beginning of the game, and they're all worth one one IPC each. Uh, and you get, uh, so you get 12 IPCs to start the game and the Burma road, if you have the Burma road as well, then that is a bonus of six IPCs. That's the only bonus that you can get in the game. And I'll show you the boat, the, uh, the Burma road. You 
probably already know what it is. So it's uh, this road that goes down here. So you'd have to, the allies, uh, including China, would have to control this territory, this territory, Burma and India. And if they control all four of those territories, then, uh, then China will get an extra six IPCs and they will have the option of building artillery. Normally in the game, all they can build is um, infantry. But if you have the road open, then they, uh, at the beginning of their turn, then they have the option of buying artillery. But let's get back to uh, the originally controlled territories and why that's important. I just wanted to show you this so I could move these out of here. Um, so China, Japan, one of the things that Japan would be likely to do in any game that you play is build complexes. Um, and the rules regarding major and minor complexes, uh, you have to have, it has to be at least uh, 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 worth three in order to, to build a major complex. And it has to be on your one of your originally controlled territories. So you think, well, this is three and, this, and Japan controls this at the beginning of the game. So they should be able to put a major complex there. But that's not the case because it's not an originally controlled Japanese territory. Japan just starts the game with that territory. It's originally controlled by the Chinese and that's why that round hole is there. So you could not put this complex on there, nor could you put it on Manchuria as well because Manchuria is worth three, but you still can't put it on there. The only territory that Japan would ever be able to put a major complex on other than the island of Japan is Korea. Korea is worth three and you can see by the, the Japanese round hole here that, that uh, that uh, it is originally controlled by the Japanese. So that is the only territory where they could possibly put a major complex on. But they could put minor complexes on anything that is uh, two or more. And that doesn't matter whose territories they are, you know, as long as Japan controls them, right? So like they could put it on Manchuria, they could put it on Shantan, they could put it on Kiangsu where Shanghai is. Um, and that's about it as far as Chinese territories go, right? So let's say you put it on here. Now, what happens if um, anybody takes that territory back from the, from the Japanese? Whether China takes it back, you know, J Japan's not doing very well. Maybe America's beat the crap out of their Navy or something like that. And Japan's not doing very well. And China comes over and they take this territory. Then, uh, then this goes back to the Chinese player. And... Uh, and then that complex gets destroyed. China cannot own complexes. They are not allowed to own complexes in this game. And that, that's also the case if, say, the British were to come along or the Americans or, or uh, Anzac, if they were to come in and take that over, they don't get the complex. The, the, all they do is they liberate this territory. They don't get the complex. They don't get the money. They liberate this territory for the Chinese, and then the complex gets destroyed. But there's another case here, and that's uh, um, China. Um, they are only allowed to, uh, to be in Chinese territories, and that's because of a civil war that was going on at the time when, when World War II broke out, when the Japanese attacked them. And so the, the war between the nationalists and the communists meant that they weren't going to venture very far from home. So they're only in their originally controlled territories, and that includes these Japanese ones that you can move to, or uh, they, they do allow you to go into Kwangtung, that's a, a British territory here, or you can go into Burma here. Now, those are the only two spaces on the board where you can go into that, that, is, that doesn't have the Chinese roundel on it. You can't go anywhere else. You can't fly that plane anywhere else. Uh, it, they can only go to Burma or Kwangtung. That's it. Now, um, let's, let's take a, the, a case where let's say Japan has put a complex over here on Hong Kong and then China comes in and takes that uh, later in the game. Um, what will happen here is that uh, it depends on India. If India is, is controlled by the British, then this becomes, the, then they liberate this territory for the, here, let me just grab, grab a round over there to uh, show you a bit better. What will happen is that this territory will be liberated for for India and uh, they will get this complex. So this will be a British complex and, and a British territory. That's if, if India is it is uh, is not is still in, in the hands of the UK, like if it hasn't been taken over by the Japanese or by uh, Germany or or Italy. But 
if this this if this has been taken over, let's say Japan has come and taken this over, um, what will happen then is so same situation. It uh, China goes in here to attack this. <coughs> Excuse me, China goes in and attacks that. Then what happens is that uh, uh, China takes control of that territory. So China, China will put their rondel on. And remember, they cannot own factories, right? They can't own industrial complexes. So this industrial complex will get, will get taken off the board and destroyed. So that's what happens. Uh, and like I said, it depends on whether India's capital is in the hands of the UK player or not, or whether it's in the hands of, of one of the Axis players. So that's, uh, for the most part, the political situation. I guess I could mention uh, bases as well. Um, they they are allowed to take, uh, let's say say Japan had taken this territory at one point in time, and then and then China had come down and and taken it back, and they happen to have an air base and a naval base on there. Well, China can take control of those bases. Uh, they could use the the air base if they still had the Flying Tigers fighter here. They could still use the air base to uh, to increase their range by one, so that fighter could go five. They can't use the naval base though because uh, there is no they, they have no boats. But their their allies could use that naval base, so they would be able to repair their ships there or you know extend their range there uh, with that naval base if it's in Chinese hands. But one thing though, um, if these bases get damaged, China is not allowed to pay off the damage on on any kind of base. So, you know, like if China did take this out and, and then the Japanese player came down and bombed them, then it would never get, uh, it would never get repaired. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? There, there's some of these things I'm finding out for the first time when I decided to make this video, like uh, there's that. Uh, another thing that I, that I discovered too, um, that I didn't know about, let's say, uh, Oh, here we go. That, I was wondering where that guy was. Let's say, let's say Japan comes in and takes this. Now, China could come in on the same, you know, on the on the next turn. China could, or you know, on their turn, they could come in and take this back. And then, when it's time to place units, they can actually place units on Hunan, even though they they did not control this at the at the beginning of their turn. They could place units in a territory that uh, that they didn't control at the start of their turn, as long as they've taken it over now, like they have, right? So uh, not like uh, we're with all the other countries on the board where um, if, uh, if they've either placed a complex or taken over a complex, they can't place anything there. With China, you can place stuff. As long as they own the territory, you can place it. There is no restriction. Um, and there's no restriction to how many you can place. Uh, they have no complexes. Let's say you got 10, 10 infantry uh, to place, then you can place them in 10 different places. You can place all 10 of them in one place. Yeah, it does not matter. You, you can place them anywhere you want as long as China controls that territory. Um, now, I, I mentioned earlier about that fighter and what you could do with it. So one of the things that happened uh, uh, and why I, uh, why I found out about this rule, Gargantua was telling me about it, and I, I didn't realize it. But let's, uh, let's go back to, uh, uh, if you watched that Calcutta Crush video that I posted yesterday, You'll remember that uh, there was a whole bunch of Japanese planes here, and, and this isn't the amount, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a shitload of planes in here, and they had an air base, and you know the air base doesn't really matter for this uh, scenario. But what happened was they also had units. Where are they? So these units came over and attacked Yunnan, and there was a bunch of them. Let's just put a chip under that, and and they came in with some planes planes that were on a carrier, and then the other thing that happened was. These planes bypassed that. They went right over here and they took this out. So what they did was was they took out that uh, the, that fighter. Now when um, when the Chinese lose this fighter, they do not have the the option of purchasing another one. The Americans can't give them another one. Once this fighter is out of the game, it's gone for good. And you know, with all the Japanese air power on the board, what do you do, right? Well, one of the things you can do, and, and I didn't realize this, I knew you could go to Burma and Kuangtung, but you could actually, when, like you, you, the turn before, they, they would have taken, um, they would have taken Yunnan from the, from the Japanese, uh, and then, uh, then they, when they go to land it, let's take these off again, or move them back. Um, when you, when you go to, to uh, move, um, 
do your non-combat movement, instead of placing them back here like I did, I mean, you could place them way up there too. You know, that's going to get them out of the way. But, but some of those uh, um, Japanese planes are still going to be able to hit it. And quite frankly, that's not going to do you much good up there, right? What good is the fighter if, if you're not using it? So one of the things he said you could do that I didn't realize is land it in Burma. Now, this is even when they're not at war with uh, the, the when japan is not at war with uh with japan like uh remember earlier i, I explained to you that um the uk and, and anzac could not go into china without uh without uh having that as as an unprovoked declaration of war but it doesn't work the other way like you could move these units down to burma when when the uk is not at war and there's no nothing happens to do with that. Like, well, you do that, and then you could do that. So then, if uh, if Japan wanted to take this fighter out, they're going to have to declare war on the UK, right? They can't just go in there and take that fighter out. They would have to declare war on the UK. But you know, the thinking is that you could put it there, and, and that you know, like if you were going to put it there, you, you'd move some UK units up, and you'd have a bunch of stuff there, so that that would protect that fighter over there, right? Uh, you, you would just place a whole bunch of units up there and that's how you would protect that fighter. So Japan wouldn't even want to go in and, and, and try to take it out. They would lose a bunch of their air force because now they're going in strictly planes against whatever's in here, right? It's different if they're just going in against one fighter and, and a few dudes, but it, you know, like if they're going in and there's a bunch of British in there as well, then they're going to start losing too many planes, aren't they? And it's not going to be worth it anymore. So that's, uh, that's one thing that I learned over the weekend, last weekend, and I thought that that was pretty interesting, how you could, how you could save them. Not, like, I, like I said, I, I thought that you could do that once they, once they were at war, but uh, I guess you could do it anytime. Like I read through the rules when I got home, and sure enough, it, there, there was no qualification. It just said you could go to Burma or Quang Tung. It didn't say when you were at war, when you were not at war, anything like that. Um, so... Uh, let me just read what I wrote down here. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, oh, there is one more thing. Okay, so let's say that uh, let's say that China does make it to the coast. Japan's having a bad a bad game, and you and you do make it to the coast. Now you see we've got these convoy symbols down here, right? And normally you can convoy. Um, you can uh, you can do a convoy disruption against anybody that owns territory. So you could convoy against this French territory for whoever owned it. You could convoy against the, this territory. But that isn't the case with the Chinese. The Chinese can't suffer any convoy disruptions. So the Japanese player would not get to roll against the, the, the Chinese money in this case. Because they, the, there is no convoy disruption. I guess the, probably the reason for that is that there's no Chinese Navy. So how could you disrupt it, right? <laughs> so that, that, I guess that, that makes sense. Um, and uh, really, that, there's not much more to it than that. There's no grand strategy of uh, uh, how to play um, China. Like some people say, okay, you know, you should group all your, your stuff. And other people say, well, you should spread it all out. And, you know, I've tried both and I, I found uh, just a small amount of success with both. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think uh, that uh, there really is anything else uh, that, that, uh, that can help you. I guess there is one more thing that I can mention. Let me just get, grab a couple of Russian units here. One of the things that uh, some people like to do is either from Russia or from Stalingrad, they start with a tank and a mech here, right? And to try to hold on to that that territory over there, what they'll do is they'll bring this down into China. Now that works the same as the British going in or the ANZAC going in. That's an unprovoked declaration of war on Japan, but who cares, right? Um, that has no bearing on whether or not the Americans get, get into the war, and that's the that's the one major thing with the with the UK or ANZAC going in there, is that all of a sudden Japan can can fight against uh, the UK and ANZAC, but without being at war with America. That, that's why that's a big deal. But with Russia, Japan could do that at any time. Japan can declare war on Russia at any time, and that doesn't affect their relationship with the United States. Now, if the Russians do come in here, as long as they don't attack a Japanese 
uh, Japanese in this space right here. Let's say they, they had, where's, where's my jet? If they had a Japanese dude right here and they came in and attacked him, then that, that would, uh, that would negate here. Sorry. I wasn't on camera there. If they were to come in on this case like this, that would, that would negate the Mongolian rule because you, you are touching this border here, but anywhere else, like if you steamed in here, anywhere else, that's fine. Uh, that means you're at war with, uh, with, with Japan, but it, it, it does not negate the Mongolian rule. And that's the only thing that you really care about. So, uh, it doesn't help Japan at all up there whatsoever. It doesn't make them want to attack you or, or not attack you. It's just a couple of, uh, Russian things steaming in here. And then they'll want to try, like they come in down here. They'll want to get to, uh, to Yunnan here because Yunnan is the, is the key spot here. This is where the road is and a six IPCs. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big time bonus, six IPCs, right? That go to the Chinese and also that is two spaces away from Calcutta, which means which makes a big deal. So Cal Yunnan and Shan State, that's also two spaces away. If you've got your Japanese planes over here with with an airbase, that means that they can they can attack Calcutta and then land in Yunnan. So that's why Yunnan or Shan State. That's why Yunnan is such a big deal on on the Pacific that side of the board. It's one of the most pivotal spaces on the on the Pacific side of the board, kind of like C Zone ninety was one is. That's that sea zone outside of Gibraltar. That's a pivotal space on the Europe side. And this is the pivotal space, in my mind anyway, on, on, the, on the Pacific side is this space right here. One of the most hotly contested spots on the board. So that's, that's, this, that's all of the rules regarding China. Um, uh, oh, there is one more thing <laughs> that I didn't mention. And that is, there's always one thing, isn't it? Uh, there, the one thing that I didn't mention is uh, if, if say, Japan takes everybody here. Let's just move all of this stuff off of here. And they take everything. They take every single one of their territories, all 12 of them. I'm getting there. Okay, so what happens is China can't place anything. You know, unless unless China was was to have taken one of these spaces over here, China can't place anything. They can't place anything on the board. But Japan does not get their money. China retains their money. Let's say they they still had four dollars left. They they keep that four dollars until uh, somebody comes along, like say a Russian guy comes along and takes this out. Now they can spend that four IPCs on their turn, and if that's still the case, like they'll be able to put a dude there, right, and save a dollar. Uh, but they don't lose that. They always keep that money as long as uh, as long as the game's going on. Any money that they have in their treasury. And that is China. That is all the rules. I'm sh I'm certain of it this time. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I hope that clarified things. Uh, I know there. I think the biggest part of confusion comes with these originally controlled territories. People don't realize these are Chinese territories and not Japanese territories. And when it comes to placing complexes and losing complexes afterwards, like you wouldn't be able to to move in there uh, and take it out and and uh, and place a British complex. You just you you couldn't do it because that's a Chinese territory. You couldn't do it any more than than you you could go into. A French territory and, and place a complex on it unless uh, unless the Japanese had taken the French territory first then you would be able to take that but you will never be able to take those Chinese territories you will only be able to liberate them because uh, they don't have a, a capital if they had a capital then you, you you'd be able to take them but that's not the case anyway now I'm out of breath now the video is over take care everyone general hand grenade out